Welcome to the TMF Talk Show, episode number four. And in this episode, we talk to Marcus Kyung, who is a software engineer who works in Singapore and also runs a personal finance blog. In this episode, we talk about how he juggles his full-time job with his side hustle, which is blogging. We also talk about what it's like for Marcus to reveal his entire portfolio, all the money he has online so that the whole world can see. And we also talk about his investing strategies, his money management strategies, and many more. Now, we do talk about stock investing in this video, but remember, this is not financial advice. This is merely our opinion, and you should always do your own research before investing in stocks instead of listening to a random person on the internet. So, let's jump into the show. Tell us a bit about uh, what you do and how you got into it. Before I came to Singapore, okay, I work as a software engineer in Malacca. I'm a Malaccan, okay. Um, so after two and a, two years and eight months, so I went to Singapore with my girlfriend and we uh, uh, start working as a software engineer as well in a semi-con. Uh, and until today, it's already been three years. We already married, okay, and my wife and I is uh, living in the master room. We rent a master room. So we are staying in Singapore, okay. Um, we do plan to go back in Malaysia in this year or next year, uh, but it's still in planning due to this COVID-19. Okay, a lot of uncertainty out there, and it's quite tough to look for a uh, to look for the next job to jump to the next job. So yeah, so that's all. Uh, what my career. Uh, it's what my current career looks like. And you mentioned that you are looking to move careers. You, you want to move out of software engineering or just another job? No. Uh, we are still staying in, uh, as a software engineer, okay? But we are just uh, moving location. But in career-wise, we are still staying in the same field. Okay, so both of you are software engineers? Yeah, because we uh, basically uh, came from, uh, graduated from the same course in the same university. Yeah, well, we met in the same university, in UPM, University of Putra Malaysia. Okay, cool, cool. And how long have you been working in Singapore? Uh, has, it's around like three years and uh, four months. I started uh, working in Singapore in 2017, March. So today is already uh, July. Right, so it's already been three years and four months. Okay, and how long did you work in Malaysia before that? Uh, two years and eight months like that, yeah. Okay, okay, cool. So you, you graduated around 2015, 2014? 2014. Okay, yeah. so um, is there a lot of difference between working in Malaysia and working in Singapore? Yeah, definitely. Uh, in before I came to Singapore, I, I imagine that uh, the Singapore will be a tough place okay, to work at for Malaysian because it's quite uh, challenging and quite uh, their, their pace is uh, definitely faster than Malaysian. Okay, but fortunately for me, my company is quite uh, saturated in terms of like working pace, so I feel like uh it's a uh, different than my expectation uh meaning that i thought it would be very challenging for me but it didn't because uh the working style in my company is still quite uh slow slower than uh my previous company in Malacca, right um and okay on the working pace wise other than that we uh we don't have much difference in culture wise between Singaporean and Malaysian, right? And uh, I think it's more different toward the living style, okay, compared to the working culture here. The working culture is, you can say like, is same, uh, almost sim similar to Malaysia, what, what we Malaysian do at our uh, work, work, working space. Wait, let me get this straight. <laughs> the yeah. pace in Singapore is slower than it was in, in Malaysia. You were working in Malacca at I, the time or yeah? I, I work in Malacca, okay. And 
now uh, my my company the working space uh, the working pace is slower than what I work in Malacca. I think oh, wow. it's because of my company. It's not because of the whole Singapore, right? Uh -huh. I believe that the uh, the most Mal uh, most Malaysian who work in Singapore will not agree with me. Yeah. Okay, I think they they will be more stressful than me. <laughs> so yeah. I, I consider like myself first lucky. First time I'm hearing this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, how did you get started in the um, the whole personal finance blog? I I've seen your blog; it looks great. Uh, tell us a bit how you uh, tell us a bit about how you got started with that. All right. Um. So when I start working in Singapore, right, and I start to uh figuring things in uh in terms of finance, I see um my parents already uh they retired. Okay, they they are both working uh as a police man and police woman. Okay, both of my parents. So they have a pension, right? Uh so they have every month government giving them money. So I'm thinking of what will my future future look like? Okay, if I working as a, uh, in Singapore, okay, without any EPF because once we work in Singapore, we don't have uh, any CPF un unless we contribute ourselves, okay, in voluntary. All right. So I'm figuring how my retirement will be. So I start to uh, studying things online. Then I start to search uh, how, how can we get, how can we obtain passive income. So that's when I uh, venture into uh, investing. All right. Uh, property investing is not for me because I feel not com very comfortable to uh, take more loan, more house loan, okay, to, to do uh, investing. So I start uh, checking out on stock investing. So in 2018, so I start to uh, study how, how stock investing work, how dividend works, everything. Then I uh, came to know what is financial independence, right? So this 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 concept of financial independence really uh, uh makes like uh I, I I discover financial independence and I feel that this should be the thing that we are uh we, we should striving for for uh like uh, work, workers like us because we don't have a, a sustainable uh retirement fund okay and Financial independence is all about creating a basic income source for us through investing. So because of this, I start to learn, very eager to learn how to uh, invest in stocks. So that's why I, I, I and uh, fortunately I have a friend who already invests in stocks, okay, four years ago, and he's my core co colleague. So I also learned a bit from him, right, and, and I studied myself, so it's, so I started to uh, start my stock investing journey in 2019 March. So uh, I do some research every day. When, when I, I do have free time, I will just uh, read the articles, uh, watching videos, uh, investing, about investing, everything on the YouTube, on the online. So it's, I, I kind of, I kind of uh, discover my passion when, when I, I start uh, to invest. So, yeah, that's how I start to realize that okay, stock investing maybe is is quite a good passion for me to start to uh and I should share my uh what I learned all right uh to to the to the community to public or and I I plan to uh use my existing blog all right to to write more about stock investing and financial independence. So that's how I started. All right. That's great. That's great. That reminds me of um, Jaden from Rock Bottom Financial Journey. Don't know if you heard of him. Um, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. I know, know, yeah. know him. Yeah. So just to reiterate, because you were working in Singapore and because foreign workers didn't get the CPF, then that kind of led you to dig, dig deeper into what you can do for yourself. And then you found this whole niche and that's how you started. Is that correct? Yeah. You can say that, yes. Yeah, that's great. That's really great. Uh, I guess you can say, you know, when there are, when there are certain obstacles or certain things that are, go wrong, then that leads you to a new path. So that's great. That's great. Um, yeah. So I want to ask you a bit about how you balance between your full-time job and your, your business, your side hustle. But before that, let's 
get a bit of context because we have some viewers who um, are also graduating as software engineers. So could you, could you tell us a bit about what working as a software engineer is like? Okay, so uh, because as a software engineer, we what we learned in school, in university specifically, so uh, most of the time we learn the language which is uh, not really widely used in the industry anymore, like C++, uh, Java, some, some companies still using it, but uh, most, of it, most of the time when we, uh, as a fresh grad, we just enter the career at the company, the, our first company, we might see, uh, see that we have to re relearn a new uh, programming language. So I think this is normal for a soft as a software engineer. So we should have a, a, a how to say we, we we should keep learning. Okay, then uh, we should keep learning new things, and uh, we should all we should always upskill ourselves in terms of uh, programming. Uh, don't don't be shameful to us. All right, us uh, our seniors. Uh, how to do this, how to do that, that they, they, some, some of them uh, are willing to share and we can learn a lot of things in terms of uh, our critical thinking, programming skill, uh, troubleshooting, problem solving, everything, this soft skill that we can't learn in the university. So uh, as a software engineer, I would say the learning uh, curve is quite deep for us because they are, the you, especially on the web programming, right? the things, the new things keep coming on and we, we, we cannot stop learning one day. Even our seniors are still learning. Okay, even they are in 40 or 50, they have, working been, have been working for, for 20 or 30 years and they're still learning. So, so we, we should, so you say about uh, for us who are just working for like one or two, five years, so we should keep learning as well. Okay, so as a, um, so I think software engineer is uh, a part of that. Software engineer is, uh, have a quite a bright future because uh, nowadays we see a lot of uh, uh, new job coming up like data analyst, okay, especially data analyst and uh, AI. So we, we should, uh, if we are not uh, in, in our com current company, if we are working at the routine, okay, in the routine job scope, like once we have uh, learned something that they, uh, I, I mean the company that give us a routine job that we cannot keep upskill ourselves, okay, we should, uh, as, uh, we should learn uh, other skills, okay, other programming skill when, when, we, should, uh, when we are free, all right? So we can, um, how to say, we, 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 we can upskill ourselves Right, it makes ourselves more uh, valuable, right? Don't 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 just uh keep keep in our comfort zone, all right? Is uh like they don't say right. I also watched the video, right? Don't don't keep ourselves in the uh comfort zone, so right? keep uh going out, searching for new skill and upskill ourselves. Okay, as a software engineer, I think it, it's just just not software engineer. I think everyone has to keep um learning new things, all right? So that we could be valuable for the company we are working on or the next company we would like to work on, right? That's what I think we, 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 we should uh, do uh, as, a, as, as my advice. Uh. All right, cool. So um, you mentioned that the things that you learned in uni, like C++ and all, they are outdated now. Um, I, I didn't know that. So asking this also for me, because I want to venture a bit into, I want to kind of learn a bit of coding or some programming just because I'm curious. So if there was a beginner out there and what is your opinion on what language or what programming style they should start with? So I, I got advice from someone to start with, I forgot what it's called, but uh, it's about VR. It, it's basically doing VR, VR games. But in your opinion, how, what should a beginner start with? Oh, VR. Uh, I'm not so familiar with VR. I'm kind of uh, in a um, field of uh, semi-con, which is quite boring for most programmers. And I also uh, learned some web programming myself. 
even though my company didn't do web programming uh, at all, but I'm very curious, I'm very eager to learn web programming, so I know a few stuff about web programming. But about VR, I think um, I'm not so familiar, right? And um, C++ and Java are uh, considered uh, not so uh, already outdated if we compare to other programming language like Python. But for web programming, we have a lot of new framework like um, Node.js. Uh, I forgot what, what the, uh, the name already because I, I, because I already uh, abandoned web programming for some time already. I, 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 learning, I learned web programming in 2018 and before, and I already long time didn't touch it. <laughs> so I, now I'm just uh, learning stuff from what my company needed now. Yeah. Okay, cool. And so what is it like for you to balance between your full-time job and your blog or your side hustle? Um, this has been very challenging for me. Okay, even uh, today, even now. So we have to give and take. We, um, how to say, we have to uh, plan ahead. All right. So every Saturday and Sunday, I will take some time to plan, plan ahead uh, on the next week or even the next month, okay, on how, uh, what topic should I write about, what uh, content should I prepare, and uh, I won't, uh, don't, don't, don't be so overconfident uh, on, on yourself, right, sometimes we will like, wow, we want to do a lot of things, we have a lot of topics to talk about, and we tend to like, let's, make it happen in this one month. So it's quite overwhelming, okay? So we need to um, understand that we still have a job, okay, nine, uh, eight to five or eight to six job that we need to work and we cannot uh, doing that side hustle during that time. Uh, it's, you, 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 maybe you can if you're free and especially like me, I work from home. Sometimes I, I do uh, take my free time to do some, uh, some of my blog content or the Instagram content, but I think we shouldn't do that because uh, it's not ethically good uh, for me. Mm -hmm. uh, and the balancing is, I think the planning is very important uh, for us uh, because we know uh, after work, okay, we know what to do. Instead of just wandering around and searching things online and still not sure uh, what to do or, or or other than that, maybe you are you have a lot of things to do and you can't cope with it. So it will sacrifice your time with your loved one or your friends or your family. So that would wouldn't be so good. So uh, even for me, I think planning is uh is good is a good thing, which I learned from a YouTuber uh, who talk about productivity. Right. So I think, what's his name? Uh, other than what's his name? Um, I like Matt Devela, right? Yeah. <laughs> he, yeah. His YouTube is quite um interesting, and the the quality is just superb, yeah, right? And yeah, and I also watch uh Tom Thomas Frank. Thomas okay, Frank. this was before, and uh, what else? Who else? Uh, uh, late, recently I watched uh Nathalie Drew. I, I'm not wrong about his name. He is Nathaniel someone I just discovered. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He just 22 this year and he talks like, wow, he already has so much wisdom in his head. Uh, he yeah. talks about mental clarity, but that helps a lot for us as well. Yeah, I like to watch their videos. Yeah. yeah. So I see that, you know, your Instagram is really nice, really organized. And I don't know, but it looks like it takes a lot of time. Um, so has all that planning helped you put out that quality content? Um, if you, if you notice it, actually it's a very, uh, black and white detail. I already planned it out before I started my Instagram account. Uh, mm. maybe, maybe I should say I, I, before that I was, uh, quite bad in Instagram, uh, this social media. Right, I, I'm doing stuff like very randomly, 
And I learned a lot of stuff before I start venturing into uh, personal finance, uh, how to say, as a personal finance blogger. Before that, I was just a random blogger, like lifestyle blogger. I share any life, uh, my life things, uh, everything about like going out, something that is random and no, no niche. Okay, I don't focus on any niche. Then uh, during that time, I learned a lot of things about Instagram. So when I start, uh, focusing as a personal finance blog, okay, especially on stock investing. So I already plan it out. I know uh, my Instagram content should look like uh, it, when 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 users go to my profile, it will look. Uh, my content will be all looking very neat, okay. Mm -hmm. And I also did some studies on uh, which uh, free platform can I use to do this content. So I discovered Canva. Canva is quite uh, it's a very it's a free platform with a lot of resource and uh, it's also quite uh, intuitive and user friendly. And uh, yeah, uh, almost all my Instagram uh, content are, are designed with with just Canva. And I think the initial step will be uh, very tough. You need to design how how your Instagram content gonna going to look like. And after that, uh, like after 10 or 20 posts, so it will be very, it will be a breeze for you because you are just copying, paste your format every okay. time. You, you're just changing the content only, right? Mm, yeah, uh, yeah. Mm. All right. So I want to talk about a bit about, I read your blog and something I think very unique about you is your transparency, right? So you reveal your entire portfolio and I think that's very, very, very unique of you for a personal finance blogger to do that. Not a lot of people do that. So my question is, um, what's it like to reveal all your money to the world? Like, did you get any backlash from maybe your friends or family? Or I know you said you were a bit hesitant. So tell us a bit what it was like to decide to reveal your entire portfolio online to the world. It was um, terrifying. Okay. Especially when my wife uh, found out that I did that. And she was very frustrated and angry, right? She, she said we shouldn't let uh, anyone know about our, what, how much we have. So um, I was quite uh, hesitating and struggling with this, but eventually I still review it because I think um, I want to show how stock investing looks like in terms of growing your money. Right. One thing is that, and second thing, I hope um, this kind of um, courage, courageous move can help more people to be motivated in starting investing in stocks. All right, not not in a short term way, but in a long term way. It's like dividend magic, right? Uh, what 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 he done is very impressive, but he. The difference between me and him is I reveal my face and he didn't. So this is quite risky for me. <laughs> I, 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 should, I should have not revealed myself first and then I can continue like what I him. but already too late. Okay, so I just continue doing that. And in future, maybe I might change a little bit things about that uh, amount I reveal, right? But still uh, in consideration, okay? I, I still not not sure how to do it. A lot of uncertainty about uh, whether to continue revealing my uh, stock portfolio value or should I just uh, like keep a uh, secret from everyone or what else can I do with it? Yeah, so still, still a lot of uncertainty about it. But currently I will still uh, keep sharing okay, so that uh, more people can be uh, uh, learn a, a little bit about how stock investing works. Okay, it's not like a magic, it's kind of a lot of roller coaster, right? Yeah. Yeah. And also showing your results and showing that you walk the walk instead of just talking the talk. Right. Uh, yes, correct. So since, since you, you've revealed all your, your whole portfolio, did you, get any, did anyone like message you? Did you realize like people trying to scam you or did you feel, a, or did you even feel a bit uh, unsafe or did you feel more confident, more sure of yourself and more, yeah, 
for content. Oh, okay. So talk about uh, okay. Other than my wife, uh, I don't think there's anyone who approached me and said, "Wow, you you so brave. You are you are you are revealing your value." No, no, no. They talk about that. And oh yeah, one thing I should mention that I didn't go share my blog content to every one of my friends. Okay, so only uh, just a few friends who already following my blog. Okay, so they 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 will see, it, but they didn't uh like message me like, wow, you just reveal your uh money like that. But no, no one talk about that. So uh and for the other uh readers who I didn't know, okay, for the strangers, they didn't backslash me or like um say how to what trying to scam me or nah. I don't think so, and don't think anyone uh do that except for a US guy. But I think he didn't watch, I uh, didn't saw my value. He just came out nowhere from an Instagram account, just trying to uh ask me to join his forex signals, which I know. Yeah, I just turn off, turn turn off him. <laughs> right. Um. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's quite funny. We get that sometimes too. Forex or Bitcoin or yeah, whatever. Um, ah, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think I think that's very. Um, we we never thought about revealing our own portfolio. Maybe maybe a bit, but not the whole thing. Maybe once you hit one million ringgit, once you become a millionaire, maybe that will be different. We'll check in again and see see you have what what's different. <laughs> <laughs> so, Marcus, when when you were younger and you grew up in Malacca, mm. what were you taught about money? Hmm. So my parents always encourage me to save money. Okay, that's the first thing. I remember um my dad. Alright, he he just uh he he want to buy me a uh, what I call tabong to save money. Right, he didn't just buy me a tabong. He go and cut the tree, a bamboo tree. So bamboo. So he make a custom made tabong for me to save it. So wow. it's uh it's yeah then. I just keep my money inside until I cannot um plug the coin inside because it's already so full. So I just uh said, "Hey, that is already full." So, uh, so he just open up and we count the money. It's like around hundred ringgit plus. So that was quite an exciting moment for me because as a seven or eight years old child, we never see like hundred ringgit. Okay, that time I think my mom and parent all. Only give me like fifty cent per day, so in one week I only get two fifty. So seeing one hundred uh ringgit plus in uh, in cash is quite exciting. So it has uh saving is has been a habit uh for me since young. Okay, so I think that's all about the money things. Yeah, wow, and you know great. uh, yeah, and you know Chinese is quite um. Uh, yeah, they they are very lit literate in in money things and uh, what I learned is just saving money. I think other things like investing. Nah, I I don't think my parents teach me about that. I hope right. they 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 will. <laughs> so they taught you how to save, but not what to do with your savings. The investing part you really had to teach yourself. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, true. They they didn't teach me what to do in with my money. Okay, after I save, so so what's next? I I have no idea. So he they just say okay, you save money for future. You you use it in 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 future. That's all. <laughs> so when so thanks for sharing that. That's quite a personal question, and when we ask, uh, we always appreciate that people share what it was like for them to grow up with money. Um. <laughs> so now we want to go into how how those habits, how those teachings from your parents, um manifest itself today so how do you organize your money like uh, i know that you are very uh, you, you save a lot but do you have a, a certain strategy that our followers can can follow um so that when they get their money they know exactly how much to save how much to invest how much to spend all right so you're talking about uh saving money okay yeah um for me i we i i did I did uh some method like pay myself first, right? Every month I will track my expenses. 
and I will roughly calculate the average, um, how to say, we will categorize as uh, uh, the, our expenses in food, okay, houses, uh, transport, everything. Then we, we have uh, a rough uh, numbers on how, how much we spend every month, all right? So, and we adjust and we see how much we can save. And we, we, won't, we won't save over like uh, 60%, 70% saving rate. That's very insane for, for normal people, especially who don't save. Okay, but for us, we will uh, start to put 20% uh, of my, our income, okay, into an account that we won't touch, right? Then uh, spend the rest. So that's how uh, pay yourself uh, works. And I think for people who don't save right, it's quite tough. Ah, uh, yeah. Talking about my 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 uh partner, he she she didn't thought to be save money uh since young. So it's quite challenging for her to uh save money like me. I I save money uh without any has hassle, but for for her it's quite struggling. She 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 tend to like to spend a lot, but but. Of course, she, she now changed a lot and she has been influenced by me. So she, she's a saver now, okay? And um, I think the challenge is, uh, I think the challenge uh, for people who don't save is they, they don't see uh, the money in terms of uh, long term, meaning that they don't know, they, they want to use it now. They don't want to save it for the long term. Why, why want to save it for the long term? Uh, for 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 what we, we we don't know how long can we live, so they don't have this uh, long term mindset. I think so that's why they they tend to spend every cent they get. Okay, so um that what that that, that is from my opinion and myself uh. but but I haven't really deal with someone who really uh struggling to save money every month. I I don't uh have any experience in dealing that. Except for my wife, my wife is still uh, quite easy to uh, change uh, her her how to say it, the money habits. Uh, mm. She turned into from a spender to a saver quite 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 uh, fast. She's a fast learner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. So from from your experience, what advice would you give to a couple, a relationship where one person is a saver and the other person is a spender? What how how would you advise them to get on the same page? I think the first thing we need is uh, we, try, we should understand why they are not a saver okay, or why they are sp a spender. So uh, I think um, we try to understand how, what, why they don't, don't want to spend, uh, save. So we should uh, understand what's the reason behind and uh, we try to uh, talk things out. Maybe uh, we, we have been uh, talking things, maybe the things we talk are not aligned. Like I, I, I told my uh, wife, we should save now. Then she will be like, why, why need to save? Uh, because I, okay, uh, I, give, I give an example, all right? Uh, uh, example I, I face because um, she's a very, uh, how to say, uh, filial uh, daughter to, to her parents, okay? Uh, when she are staying with her parents, right? Her parents, uh, every dining out, she will uh, spend her money uh, to treat her parents, right? even though she already given money to them. And uh, she, she spent money like, like, what we say, the water flowing out. So <laughs> is, there is no saving for, for, for her. And she, she will think that uh, money is just a uh, tool. She, she, she don't want to uh, think of uh, how to manage her finance and how why, why, why should she save money for the future? Okay, so, uh, so I understand uh, that, that, that mindset from her and I try to, uh, how to say, try to accept it, all right? And I will tell my own uh, opinion on why I save so much money, all right? Okay, for our wedding, okay, maybe for our next uh, house purchase. So she kind of like get it. And she also accepted it. And uh, so that's how she uh, starts saving money, right? And okay, one more thing I want to share is uh, she, when before, before she come to Singapore, right? 
she doesn't have any saving, right? Uh, so I forced her to save uh, like 10,000. Okay, it's quite tough for her because she, she doesn't have any saving. So 10,000 is quite a huge amount. But eventually she saved it. Okay, that 10,000 helped her to um, start uh, working in Singapore because once uh, we migrate from Malaysia to Singapore, we need uh, to find a rental room. Right, and rental room requires us one month deposit. If let's say uh, rental costs us five hundred dollar, okay, so we need to give a what five hundred dollar deposit, and and another five hundred for the first month um, staying there. So total is one thousand uh, dollar, so it's equally equivalent to three thousand ringgit. So uh, the saving helped her to transit from Malaysia to Singapore. So yeah. All right, great, great advice, Marcus. So first thing is to appeal to their interests. So tell them, look, uh, we are saving for, for this, maybe a wedding, maybe a house in the future, uh, so that they feel involved to their interests as well. And the second thing is um, showing them practical ways to use their savings so that is saving is not just saving money, but it's actually you show them how it's beneficial. Yeah, I think showing practical way to uh, practical ways is uh, better than just talking. Uh, mm. Most of them don't like, yeah, don't like to hear saying that uh, doing nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Cool. All right. So, Marcus, so what is one thing that you bought? Um, I will give you under 100 Sing dollars that has been the most benefit to you. Okay. 100 Sing dollars that benefit for me. Um, I think I could say, uh, um, I didn't think of uh, any $100 things that and really under $100. Uh, useful for $100, yeah, $100, right, under. $100. Okay, uh, okay, I think it will be uh, my mouse, okay, it's, uh, I, I share a funny story with, uh, with you all, um, I have been using a wireless mouse, all right, for my laptop, Okay, for doing things like blogging or doing my work. And it's been quite frustrating because the battery, um, my wireless mouse is eating up my battery quite fast and I always uh, out of batteries. And it's quite uh, frustrating for me to keep, uh, have to keep stocking the batteries, buying batteries. And when the batteries run out, I have to go buy again. It's quite frustrating. So, um, I decided to get a wire mouse instead. It's just a two dollar because I bought from a second hand someone from someone, okay, from Carousel. And <laughs> I, after I use the wire mouse, I feel that my life is a lot comfortable than ever before. I I I've been using wireless mouse because I always frustrating of finding the new batteries, buying the new batteries, stocking the new batteries. So yeah, I think the two dollar wire mouse really helped me. Even though I think it's just a small thing, I think it does matter. <laughs> oh, it's great. It's great that you have it like best, <laughs> best purchase under $100 from a saver, a $2 wired mouse. I love it. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so Marcus, so what is the best, I know you talk a lot about investment in your blog and stuff. So what is the best investment that you've made so far? Best investment. Okay, so uh, if someone who is uh, reading the personal finance a lot, so they will expect it. the best investment is to invest in yourself, right? And uh, I think I'm going to say that, okay, investing in myself is the best investment because I think the knowledge, uh, the stock investment knowledge is very wide and deep. So even when I think I'm already uh, known a lot, about stock investing, uh, you, I, I, I realized that I haven't known uh, a lot of things yet because I, uh, during my first year of stock investing, right, I, I only read one book, okay, it's uh, from a Malaysian Chinese called The Coal Eye. I'm not sure you guys uh, know about it because it's just a Chinese, uh, he, he's an author from Nanyang and he only write Chinese. Okay, I think a lot of uh, who's th those Malaysians who didn't know Chinese uh, didn't know about him. Okay, his uh, band name is Cole Eye. 
All right, you can search it up. Uh, and uh, okay, uh, where, where, where should I? Okay, I, I only read one book from him, okay? And I thought I'm uh, good, I already good at stock investing. So I just uh, invest as what, uh, what his book told and, and around this year, right? This year, uh, there's a huge uh, crash in uh, global stock market. And I caught myself uh, really unprepared for that. And I think it's because I haven't really invest well in my uh, stock investing knowledge yet. I should, I think, so I, I start to reflect myself, why, why, why did I panic sell all my stocks at, at that time? And uh, even though I didn't incur uh, much loss, maybe compared to other investors. And I, so that time I realized I should have read more uh, stock investing books, all right, and knowledge uh, before I, I being so confident in myself in stock investing. So I have been uh, searching a lot of uh, ebooks and buying uh, books, uh, physical books, okay, from uh, maybe Amazon or, or from other uh, online shops. So I think the best investment is still really invest in uh, our, our brain, you know, head in terms of knowledge wise, if you are uh, keen in stock investing. Okay. Right. Mm. And how about your, in your opinion, your best stock investment? Oh, you mean stock investment, not just investment. <laughs> stock investment. Because the, the usual okay. answer is, yeah, invest in your knowledge in yourself. But because you are, you are more towards stock investing, I'm just curious to know what you think is your best, what, has, what has been your best investment so far in terms of stocks? Yeah. Okay, the previous question is about stock investment or just investment? <laughs> um, both ways. So now that you already answered the, the knowledge, which the I agree. Um, yeah. yeah, so now we uh, kind of want to know what is the best stock investment that you've made. Uh, okay, the stock investment I made. I think, I think I love this stock the most. Okay, the name is called Foundback, right? Because I study a lot about this company and I also made a lot of money from it uh, in my uh, initial investment like a few 10,000 from it. And I also lost a lot of money from it as well. Okay, but it's still, a, a, in, in for me, it's still my best uh, stock investment, investment so far. And I couldn't just get rid of it. I, I still investing in it, but with just a small amount because everyone is uh, very uncertain about stock right now. All right, so I kept uh, half of my, uh, money in cash so that uh, we prepare for any um, certain circumstances in the future. Yeah. So I, my, my answer is fall back, right? <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, for, for me, I, I, I'm kind of new to stock investing. I, I don't consider myself an investor yet. I just consider myself like a speculator because at first I was kind of interested, but then I, 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 I figured out that it took quite too much of my time so I just kind of put in. So I only hold one stock, which is Tesla. Um, and that's the only stock that I hold so far. And so far it's been good. So far it's been good. So yeah. yeah um, that's the hot stock in US. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I know you write this about this in your blog, but just really quick, maybe what are the three, four or five things that you look for in a company before you invest in it? All right. Um, the user way I scan how I screen a company is uh, the first thing is their earnings. Okay, I will look back in their past five years or 10 years earnings. Uh, I don't invest in the stock uh, which uh, has continuously uh, losing profit. All right, maybe their earnings will be dropped, but it's okay, but I will, will still uh, consider it. Okay, the first thing is earnings, right? The second thing is, um, is there is the company paying dividends, right? I think dividend is quite important because it shows how the company value their shareholders. Uh, did, I didn't say, uh, but this doesn't mean that uh, some company who didn't pay dividend doesn't value their shareholder, but uh, this is quite a basic thing, a, a, a criteria for me to scan uh, for 
good companies. Okay. The, then second thing is dividend. Okay. Third thing is um I will check their debts borrowing. So debts and borrowings uh this thing you have to uh know how to dig into their financial report. Right? They have a uh figure in it. I uh because some companies is quite risky, in, uh, especially for oil and gas uh, or utility or some uh, very heavy uh, labor, not, not heavy labor, heavy asset uh, industries. So I think debts play a very important on how company manage their debts and cash, right? Uh, the the user, user ratio we see is debt versus equity ratio. So, and I will add one more is uh, debt versus cash. If the company have ca uh, cash more than debt, then I will consider the company will be safe to invest, right? So that's the third. And the fourth, I think is the free cash flow. Free cash flow meaning that uh, how much cash flowing in their company per quarter or per annual. So we can know the uh, company really have uh, more cash for the future expansion or paying dividend, I think uh, that's the that's is quite important for uh, uh, doing business. Okay, for companies, so that's the four things. First is uh, earnings; they must should have, have earnings, uh, maybe uh, growing earnings. And second is uh, they should paying dividend. So I I don't don't uh, no matter how much dividend, at least as long as they pay dividend, uh, that's good. Okay, third is uh debt should shouldn't be too too high, all right. If not, it will be a red flag. And the fourth is the free cash flow. That's how I um look at a company at a first glance. Right, cool. So I was gonna ask, like, do do you think running your own business, running your own side hustle, kind of changed the way you view how to invest in a company? Hmm. I maybe I didn't consider my side hustle as a business yet. So yeah, no, no. I, I will say no. Okay. I, I didn't uh my side hustle didn't affect how I see how I invest in a company. Okay. Yeah. Cool. All right. So Marcus, before we wrap up, one last question mm -hmm. is if you could have a billboard on the road and millions and billions of people would pass by and see it, what would you say? Oh, wow, that's a challenging question. Um, I would say invest for the long term. <laughs> yeah, I think that quote, yeah, it would be good. good. If I, I want to portray myself as a uh, personal finance, all right, I would say that invest for the long, long term. Uh, maybe at, always invest for the long term. Yeah, I think that's, that's a, a, a good phrase. <laughs> Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much, Marcus. How can we find you online? Okay. You can find me in my Facebook page. Okay. Also, uh, name is Marcus Kiong. Uh, I also uh, play around in Twitter. Okay. But I will uh, usually focus on Instagram. Okay. It's how you find me. Instagram and Facebook page. And you also can search me uh, in my blog. MarcusKeong.com. Yeah, I think that's all. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so I think last question that I forgot to ask in the beginning. Um, what's what's next yeah. for Marcus Keong? Like, do you want to keep working as a software engineer? Are you happy there, or do you want to take more of this um, blog stuff to to actually replace your job? Um, mm, I'm planning to uh, make my this blogging stuff to as a uh, main stuff, but I think it's quite a long journey, a long road for me. And I also uh, currently also trying to, uh, I plan to start a YouTube channel in future. And uh, I'm not sure how 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 will it go because I don't think I'm still uh, very good in talking like at least you, <laughs> because my my I have a lot of um how to say. I have a lot of like okay, okay. I keep saying the things repeatedly, and I think I need to keep uh practice on this thing before I start a YouTube channel. Yeah, and uh, yeah, that's my future planning. 
uh, yeah, I think like you all, we, we, we plan to have our, uh, hope to see our side hustle, side hustle, okay, become our main income source, right? Yeah. <laughs> cool. So if we, if we could give one advice about YouTube or video, like when my brother Emir and I started, we were a lot worse. If you see our first few videos, it's a lot worse. So the only way you get better is to just keep doing it and keep practicing. But yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think that's a good advice. I, I can see you guys already progressed a lot. Uh, the, the quality content, I mean, the video quality is quite good. Yeah, compared to the last, the first video. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you so much, Marcus. Um, that's it for this show, and we'll end it here. All right. Thanks, thanks Ali, for having me. So that was Marcus Kyung on the TMF Talk Show episode number four. Thanks so much for tuning in and watching till the end. I hope you got tons of value from it and that you take home something practical that you can start applying today. Leave a comment down below. Who would you like us to interview next and tag them so that they can see it too. And we'll see you in the next video.